Hey guys, Michael here from Granex Agency. So in today's video, I'm gonna be going over some music marketing essentials that you really need to know before you start investing in music marketing. Before I get into the video, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do that so you can get kept up to date for any time we drop any videos that are gonna help you along your journey of learning music marketing. If you're subscribed already and you haven't tapped the notification bells, it means that you're missing out on all of the latest content that we drop. So tap the notification bells so you can get kept up to date and let's get into the video. So when it comes to music marketing, the problem that a lot of independent musicians and producers face is that they don't start off with any solid foundations. They're missing the key essential ingredients in order to make sure that they have you know, successful campaigns. And in this video, what I hope to do is explain some of these points and give you a brain dump of some of the essential steps that you need to take before you consider investing in marketing your music. So the first thing I'm going to start off with is establishing a budget and a goal. So we'll start off with the budget. When it comes to your budget, you need to know how much you're able to contribute towards your marketing after you've spent all the money creating the music. You then need to look at your finances and where you can allocate a decent enough budget in order to make sure that you can, you know, get your music out there to a wider audience. You know, in our agency, we normally suggest at least from 250 all the way to 500 a month and if you're independent that's obviously going to be a lot of money for you so what you need to do is start looking at what you can actually allocate that's feasible for you but a budget is essential because what's going to happen is when you start running your campaigns you're going to need to do a lot of testing and you're going to have a lot of mistakes along the way that is going to eat into your marketing budget so let's say if you run a maximum of 15 campaigns you're likely to get a release around seven campaigns that are unsuccessful or campaigns that you've tested that have taught you stuff that allow you to have the winning campaigns so this is why the budget is essential and i guess it's financial literacy of you understanding how to budget yourselves correctly in regards to the amount that you can allocate from you your full-time or part-time job and your personal responsibilities and then you know the change that you've got spare that you can then invest not only into the production of creating the piece of music but also into marketing that piece so it gets out to the right sort of listeners so budgeting is definitely something that you need to have as one of your essentials when you're marketing your music have your budget in place so you know how much you can spend the second point is a goal when it comes to campaigns even the framework that the advertising platforms have are set in a way that you have to set your goal so you've got your campaign what type of campaign then you've got your ad set and then you've got your actual ad that you're going to be running which is the creative and the visuals but the main thing we're talking about here is the campaign what type of campaign are you going to be running which is something that coincides with the goal that you're hoping to achieve in most cases you may be running traffic campaigns which is you know sending a user that sees your ad to another website your website for example or sending them to youtube or sending them to Spotify links, or you may be running a video view campaign where you're getting people to watch, you know, as much as possible of your video so that you can create a custom audience in the future. And then the third example, you could be running a conversion campaign, which is used not only to get people to click and ensuring that the click is quality in regards to when we look at the traffic versus the conversion, but then also when we're talking about conversions, it can also be used if you have products and services that you're selling and you're looking to get in front of an audience, get them to purchase it for £5, $5. And you know that your cost of this service is £50 or $50. So you know that you're getting profit, you know. So the key aim here is to have as essential is to outline from the beginning, what is your goal? What is success? And a return of investment look like for you if you don't have that from the beginning it's going to be very difficult for you to see any sort of progression in regards to you investing money in your ad campaigns so make sure you have a clear goal from the get-go and make sure you have an idea of how much you can allocate budget wise to the campaigns that you hope to be successful so the second essential that i'll add to this list is making sure that you have your target solidified what i mean by that is making sure that you know exactly who you want to target in regards to the audience you want to receive your ads. So what artists do you sound similar to that you feel your music is going to resonate most with? 
And another point is, what locations do you feel are going to resonate most when you show them your music? So look at all of your social media platforms and gather that data. Look at the, the countries, the cities, the people that have been streaming your music most. Look at your Instagram profile, look at the insights and see where most of your, your followers are coming from and collect all of this data and establish a solid list of the countries that you're willing to target and establish a list of the artists that you also feel that you sound like. If you feel like you're being a little bit biased and you're not able to get a well-rounded list, then start asking friends. Start sending your music to people online and getting you know feedback from them so they can give you an idea of who they feel you sound like. The reason why you establishing your targets is really key is because your campaign, your ad set level is going to be populated based on this data. And if you don't have it in the beginning, all you're going to be doing is limiting your chances of success because you're not able to target the maximum amount of artists in order to make sure that you're getting a proper test going on. So you can compare your music against, you know, hip hop, pop. Um, R&B, that's three different genres that you're able to target it against instead of just targeting hip hop or, you know, R&B by themselves, which means it's limiting the sort of results that you're able to get because you're not spreading yourself wide enough in order to test different genres or test different artists, you know. So it's key for you to establish the countries from the get-go to understand the way your music is going to be received best based on your insights and data you have across social media. And it's also essential for you to have a solid list of artists that you feel you sound like. The third point I want to talk about in terms of essentials, I'm going to add ad copy, research and understanding the message that you want to put in front of your ideal audience. A lot of independent artists fail to realise that the tone and the way that you convey your message to your audience that you want to engage with your content really does matter. So putting effort into the writing that you're going to be putting underneath the video you're going to be promoting, you know, is really valuable. It's essential because at the end of the day, what is likely to happen is people are going to see your video and then they might end up scrolling all the way down to see what you're writing about it. And nine times out of 10, you're going to notice that a lot of artists just put the track name and say out now it tells people that the song is out now but it doesn't really give more so they're left kind of empty in regards to what the song is about how long the song took for you to create who was featured on the song with you you know what creative thoughts were going through your mind when you decided to create the song you know try and get in depth in terms of the creative process if you're truly a creative then you should have a lot more than saying the music is out now to write about the song that you're putting out there. And this has a lot to do with you kind of researching and understanding how to perform effective ad copy and just improving the way you're conveying your message, your brand towards your ideal target audience. So that's something that I would say is really essential, which is really looking at your ad copy and understanding how crucial that is in regards to you, you know, paying to promote your music out there rather than you just looking at the video that you're going to be promoting or the image you're promoting, a huge factor as well is what you're writing and communicating as your brand message in front of the ideal audience and whether that's going to be resonating or not. So the next time or when you begin to start feeling like you're ready to run music promotion, you definitely need to look at the message and the tone and how that's going to come across and put some creative thought into it instead of just being bland and like all of the rest of the artists out there by just using this simple line that's out now and probably adding a few emojis in there. So that's a point that I would add as an essential ad copy. So the fourth point that is essential when it comes to marketing your music is testing. I mentioned this a little bit previously when I was talking about your budget and accounting for the testing phase in your budget. But the reason why testing is so essential is because it allows you to test variations of images, videos, and understand which ones resonate best with the audience that you're targeting. What a lot of independent musicians and producers do when they first start running campaigns to promote their music is they only test one thing. And what that also does to you is it stops you from being able to test a wide range of variations to understand what is going to resonate best. So let's say, for instance, you've got one specific video of the track you've just released and you're running promo to that, 
and most of your investment is going directly towards that video if that's giving you a cost per a click for let's say 20 pence what's going to end up happening is you're never going to be able to lower that because you haven't tried different variations targeting that same audience that is giving you 20 pence it could be a simple tweak of the video where you play the middle part of the video instead of the current video campaign that you're running where you're showing a start to that desired audience and that could lower your cost from 20 all the way to 5 pence per click or per conversion or per view so the key message for you to kind of understand here is that before you start running campaigns one of the things you need to understand is it's your job to test from the start which is going to give you much more of a perspective of what is working to that desired audience that you're trying to get your message across to if you don't test your limit in the amount of results that you're able to receive because you're narrowed in your targeting so testing is a fundamental element that you need to add as one of your essentials before you start marketing your music it's something that you need to integrate into your practice whenever you're releasing music and you're looking to invest in marketing and promo. So the fifth essential point I would mention is making sure that you have a smart link. The reason why I say that is because instead of just having one link and limiting the amount of access that your end user has, for instance, if they don't have Spotify, they can go and watch your content on YouTube. And if they don't have YouTube, then they can go on Apple Music or they can go on any of the other distribution platforms that you're available on. So it's giving your end user as much options as possible. That's one of the kind of unkept secrets that a lot of independent musicians and producers starting out to market their music through paid promo don't really utilize and understand. And another advantage of using this is the fact that most of these platforms that allow you to have smart links such as using um, smart link URL or using tone then and all of these other platforms that allow you to have the capabilities of using one link that leads to multiple different distribution platforms where your end user can listen and watch your music the advantage of using this is the fact that these platforms also allow you to advertise directly on those platforms as well so you can advertise your music on tone then and get your music in front of people on spotify so they have integrated services that are similar to using Facebook or Instagram ads, but it's dedicated to their platforms. So you're more likely to tap into their audiences. So let's say specifically you wanted to find similar artists on Spotify. If you had a toned in link or you used a Ditto or you used a smart URL, you will be able to use their specific advertising platforms alongside the ad manager. They pretty much do the same thing. It's all down to your preference and comfortability. And what that will allow you to do is have more targeted ads that are running to your specific audiences and tapping into the desired audience that you really want to engage with your music that you've released. So it's really key to look into smart URLs and use that as the options that allow your end users to tap on any other links whilst you're running promo so that they have links available to them instead of just giving them the one youtube link or the one spotify link you can have multiple links hopefully in this video you've been able to get a solid understanding of some of the essential factors that you need to consider before you start running any sort of music promo because what's going to end up happening is you're going to invest in marketing your music on facebook or instagram or youtube and what's going to happen is you're not going to get the results that you felt you were going to get in the beginning and then you're going to look at advertising platforms as something that is not successful but the reason why you weren't able to achieve those results is because you didn't have the things in place and the foundation solid enough before starting out so hopefully you're going to watch this video you're going to take notes on some of the points that i've mentioned if you've got any questions please do comment in the comment section and let me know and i'll answer them to the best of my ability but it's michael from Grenex agency and i hope to see you guys in the next video